Welcome. I hope you enjoy this talk on cholesterol and heart attacks. These are the goals that I have for the recorded talk. Atherosclerosis is a chronic disease of the arterial system. It occurs when fat and fibrin build up in vessel walls and harden over time. The fat and fibrin build up and narrow the blood vessels, preventing blood flow. This results in ischemia in the tissues. It is important to understand atherosclerosis because when we understand the progression, we can know how to prevent, diagnose, and treat the disorder. So what triggers atherosclerosis? It is triggered by injury to endothelial cells of the artery walls. Inflammation sets in and plays a key role in each of the events of atherosclerosis. Risk factors are anything that increase inflammation and injury to the, in, to the blood vessel walls. This includes smoking, hypertension, diabetes, insulin resistance, sedentary lifestyle, increased levels of LDL in blood, or decreased levels of HDL, oxidative stress, infection, and periodontal disease. Injured endothelial cells become unable to produce antithrombic and vasodilating cytokines. This causes blood clots to form, and vessels lose the capability to dilate. Injured endothelial cells attract macrophages and other inflammatory cells to the site of injury. The increased release of cytokines from the inflammatory cells cause even further injury. Atherosclerosis progresses as LDL becomes oxidized. LDL enters the tunica intima of blood vessel walls. Inflammatory cytokines then generate oxygen radicals that oxidize or add oxygen to the LDL. Macrophages that are at the site of injury consume these oxidized LDL forming foam cells. Foam cells accumulate in the intima of blood vessels forming a lesion called a fatty streak. Fatty streaks enlarge and trigger the release of even more toxic oxygen radicals. These oxidize even more LDL which are consumed by even more macrophages. This causes fatty streak to build up. Immunologic and inflammatory damage thus can accumulate in the vessel walls. Here we can see a picture of fatty streak. As you can see we see there is a fair amount of um, fat, but there's also quite a bit of space in the lumen. Blood can still flow through, but you need to be careful because if it builds up more, it can obstruct blood flow. Macrophages at the injured endothelium release growth factors. These growth factors cause smooth muscle cells to proliferate over the fatty streak, leading to fibrous plaque. Here we can see a picture of fibrous plaque. As you can see, the fatty streak has built up. There's a smooth muscle that has proliferated over the fatty streak, has caused the fatty streak to build up. It's now fibrous plaque. This plaque can calcify and block blood flow. Um, these plaques become rigid very easily. It's like a scarring of the blood vessel. Furthermore, inflammatory mediators cause plaque to become unstable. This leads to plaque rupturing. When plaque ruptures, it is known as complicated plaque. Platelet adhesion and thrombus formation are very likely to happen in complicated plaque. Here we can see a picture. Um, in this area, the plaque is ruptured and a thrombus has formed. So fibrous plaque and complicated plaque both um, narrow blood vessels and obstruct blood flow. This is the main reason why atherosclerosis is, is traumatic to the body. When blood flow is obstructed, then important organs aren't able to receive nutrients. It results in ischemia and it can cause infarction. 
The organs that are most susceptible to ischemia infarction are the heart and the brain. So we're going to look at what can happen to the heart. Manifestations of, my, of atherosclerosis include inadequate perfusion and transient ischemic attacks. Chronic manifestations include peripheral artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, kidney disease, and coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease is most often caused by atherosclerosis. It is any condition that narrows the coronary arteries and impedes blood flow to the heart. So there are two ways that myocardial infarction normally occur. The first way is through thrombo thrombotic occlusion, and the second way is through peripheral hypertension. In thrombotic occlusion, a thrombus forms, and this leads to an embolism being lodged in a coronary artery. When that happens, there's myocardial ischemia, which leads to myocardial infarction. In peripheral hypertension, blood vessels throughout the body become less elastic. This causes the blood flow to not be as readily to not go as readily through the circulation. As a result, the heart must work harder and the left ventricle hypertrophies. Left ventricle hypertrophy increases the oxygen demand of the heart and the heart must work harder. This causes even more oxygen demand and it's a feedback system. Eventually this will lead to myocardial ischemia and to myocardial infarction. Symptoms of atherosclerosis and heart attack include pressure, burning, squeezing in the center of the chest. This is caused by a lack of oxygen supply. When the heart demands more oxygen than can be supplied, then you're going to feel this pain. It's actually angina and it can be felt directly or it can be referred pain when it's felt in the shoulder, arm, back, or upper abdomen. Other symptoms include nausea or vomiting, shortness of breath, sweating, sense of doom or anxiety, lightheadedness or fainting, and cardiac death. Heart attack is diagnosed through history and physical examinations, electrocardiogram readings, and blood tests. The blood tests are used to detect enzymes that are released after ischemia events. Treatment includes hospitalization with continuous monitoring, oxygen therapy, or angioplasty. Oxygen therapy is used to supply oxygen when the oxygen supply is low or when blood can't make its way through the vessels to adequately supply enough oxygen. Angioplasty is a procedure for opening the narrowed or blocked arteries. This is an emergency procedure and it's performed 90, to 12, 90 minutes to 12 hours after the heart attack. Another treatment is coronary artery stents. This is when a tube is surgically inserted into the coronary artery to keep the artery open so that the blood can flow through. Thrombolytic therapy includes drugs that break up the clots. This allows blood to flow through. Coronary artery bypass surgery is open heart surgery in which a blood vessel from another part of the body is inserted. This blood vessel will bypass the block in the coronary artery and allow blood to flow through so that ischemia does not result. Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you have a wonderful day.